Hey, Jim Hoffman here for EMS Office Hours. This is your Monday Minutes. Uh, guys, today is the first episode for cardiovascular emergencies. And we're going to go over some of the basics today, kind of a kind of a general review. Um, before we get into that, of course, I want to, of course, mention why this stuff is important. And yeah, it's key information to help you pass exams especially some of the stuff today we start talking about blood pressure and what it is and stroke volume and stuff like that but it's not just for the exams guys it's also designed to build your knowledge base so that if you're kind of confused things aren't clicking for you that you'll go ahead and do some research whether you open up your textbook doing some google searching uh check out some of the educational blogs that are out there or using a resource like TurboMedic. um it's going to help you build that knowledge move your knowledge needle just a little bit, little by little, to make you a better provider. And that's going to, of course, help you make better clinical decisions, write better reports, and interact better with other healthcare professionals like doctors, nurses, and even other paramedics um, as well, your paramedic peers. So let's get into today's uh, topic. Again, quick overview, guys, because I don't want to get too much into the weeds here because this can go on forever, right? Cardio- cardiovascular systems and, and, and emergencies can be hour-long presentations just on something like hypertension. So I want to just kind of point out, though, that when we talk about cardiovascular disease, it's the number one killer out there, okay? Um, And about 2,600 people die every day from cardiovascular disease. And we're talking about things like high blood pressure, coronary heart disease, uh, heart attacks, angina, stroke, CHF, even rheumatic heart disease as well. Um, and it, believe it or not, one in five people walking around out there, right, people you see on the street every day, have some form of cardiovascular disease. So w- what are some of the risk factors when we talk about this, right? Well, a lot of these you know, okay, smoking, diabetes, high cholesterol, but also it's important to note that family history can predispose you to that, Um your age, of course, when when every your it'll rise every year of life. The death rates rise. Okay, when it comes to cardiovascular disease, men are more apt to have a problem with cardiovascular disease and die from that as well. Um, so a lot of other risk factors we have to keep in mind when we're doing our assessments and we're talking to patients having complaints of chest pain, CHF patients, things like that, to kind of tie in what might be going on with them. If they are a smoker or they have high blood pressure or they are getting on in years, things like that can kind of lead you on on that way and help you make a clinical determination of what's going on with your patient. So cardiovascular system, guys, like I mentioned earlier, there's some key stuff here that you must know. you got to keep aware of, okay? You're going to see this stuff on exams, all right? Especially when you hear words like stroke value, you hear things like afterload, all right, so keep this stuff in mind. Again, if it's not clicking, this is a short review, so go open up that textbook and review this stuff, okay? Concrete this stuff into your mind, okay? So stroke volume is that amount of blood that's pumped into the cardiovascular system in one contraction of the heart. Usually it's about 70 mLs, and it depends upon these other three things we're looking here, okay? So contractility, the 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 extent and the velocity of muscle that's that's shortening the 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 contraction itself, okay, and that is going to of course depend upon the preload and the afterload. So your preload is that passive stretching force on the ventricular muscle at the end of diastole, okay. Now more blood, of course, returning increases that preload, and then less blood returning is going to decrease it. So if the container or the vessels is greater than the fluid, you're going to have inadequate preload and then a decrease in cardiac output. Now, afterload is that pressure that the ventricular muscles have to generate to overcome high pressure in the aorta and eject the blood out. Okay, so again, kind of four pieces here, all tying in together. Okay, but again, these are elements that are going to be very key when you're thinking about what might be going on with your patient, especially if they've got low blood pressure or high blood pressure going on, okay, Um, and maybe fluids backing up into the lungs, 
Maybe they've got edema. All this stuff is going to tie in together. So it's important to kind of know this basic information, guys. Not get too much into the weeds with it, but know enough about it so that you, it'll click for you when you're doing your patient assessment. So I want to go over some of the, the key sort of um, uh, uh, A&P here. We talk about cardiovascular system um, to kind of tie things in a little bit for you here. So the myocardium, that's the heart muscle. The, epicard the epicardium is the outside of the heart. And the pericardium, these are two membranes. They're thick, okay? Um, and these surround the heart. The inner one is the visceral, and the outer is the parietal, okay? So just kind of tying this in. Again, this stuff you may not see that exam when it comes to epicardium, pericardium, but it's important to know the, the differences and the different uh, uh, kind of layers, okay? So you have an idea what's happening. So <clears throat> a little bit more here, guys. I'm going to bring into a little bit of the blood pressure. All right, because you will see this type of stuff on here, blood pressure, systole, diastole, okay? So blood pressure, that's that force, okay, that the blood exerts against the walls of the artery as it passes, okay? And the systole is pressure that's within the arteries during that heart contraction, okay? Now diastole or diastolic is the relaxation phase, okay? And this is also indicating that there's myocardial perfusion going on at that point. Your cardiac output, this is the amount of blood that gets pumped each minute. This is that heart rate times stroke volume. You're going to see stuff like that on the exam, guys. You can say, what is cardiac output, okay? And it's the amount of blood pumped each minute. And again, it's that heart rate times stroke volume. Don't pay attention to my misspelling. I've, I've got an O instead of a P, but you get the picture, okay? Now, I want to talk a little bit, guys, about the circulation. All right, keep in mind there's three types, pulmonary, systemic, and coronary. Now, pulmonary circulation, that's that transport of deoxygenated blood through the lungs. The lungs oxygenate, the, oxygenate that blood and bring it back into the left side of the heart. Now, your systemic circulation is where the, your left ventricle gets that oxygenated blood and it pumps that through the body. It goes through the semilunar or the aortic valve and then to the aorta and then out to the body. Now your coronary circulation is separate, right? Um, and this is where the heart muscle is getting its blood from, okay? Where it's getting that its own blood supply. Your right main, your left main, okay, things like that. And it's got five coronary veins and those empty into the right atrium via the coronary sinus. So the veins become the coronary sinus and that empties into the right atrium, okay? Now, kind of just to recap, guys, cardiovascular system, remember, it's closed, right? So when we're increasing cardiac output or we're increasing vascular resistance, that's going to increase the blood pressure, okay? Of course, the reverse of that, if you decrease cardiac output or you decrease back to resistant, you're going to have a lower blood pressure, okay? Yes, I know, I've misspelled output again. So real quick, guys, going to go over blood vessels. going to round up today's Monday Minutes. You know, blood vessels are, again, another closed system. Right, sometimes this is the actual container itself. They can, they can call this a container too, okay? And they're elastic, okay? They are always adjusting their diameter, all right? And they respond to local tissue needs. So they're going to give blood to areas that are vital, okay, bypassing less important tissues. This is why you get patients who are, who are clammy, right? Because the blood and the circulation is getting sent to vital organs, the heart, the brain, okay? And your sympathetic nervous system, this is what is activating that dilation or that contraction, okay, that helps everything adjust and respond and get blood going to where it needs to be going when the body is having an issue and it's bringing it to the vital organs, okay, in the vital area that it needs to go ahead and get blood to, okay? So, guys, again, 
this is a basic overview, okay? You can do an, an hour, probably an hour long uh, presentation just on blood vessels alone, just on blood pressure alone. You start talking about stroke volume and all that, right? So again, this is an overview. I want you to see that kind of a review of what, of what you probably already know to hopefully ring some bells. And again, if you don't understand what's happening, to go ahead, do some more research, crack open that book, okay, and move that knowledge needle just a little bit to help you be a better provider. And again, like I mentioned earlier, do better on your exams, but also be a better clinician overall. Guys, if you look for some more help, okay, some more information and ways to engage with me, well, you can do it right here. You can get me on Twitter or on Instagram. I am at EMS Safe on both of those channels. Or you can join me on Facebook, and it's facebook.com forward slash the EMS professional. Uh, in addition to that, guys, of course, you can also engage me on the main website, the emsseo.com. Uh, I encourage you to go there and get uh, many, many resources there to help you pass exams, study for for being a better professional, studying for exams like study guides, videos, audios, increase your knowledge by using the presentations there, using the free downloads there, okay? It's all designed for your success so you can get more get more education and, of course, increase opportunities in your career by having more education, okay? Guys, as always, if you've got some minutes of your own, send them over to me. My email is contact at emsofficehours.com. You can also reply or make comments in the video notes here, or you can even DM me on any of the social media channels as well. And I always respond to the emails and questions and comments that get posted. Guys, I encourage you as well, go to emsofficehours.com, the main blog there. Look at the previous Monday Minutes, listen to some of the podcasts and other articles that are posted there on a regular basis. All right, guys. As always, I am Jim Hoffman for EMS Office Hours and the Monday Minutes. Stay safe.